Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dame Edna Everett! Maybe you should begin with a song. A song? What a brilliant idea. People ask me what my show's about. Pass them. And what do you say to them, David? Oh, I say come along to the theatre and find out. Pass them. There's a little dance and a little song. <laughs> but I make most of it up as I go along. But my muse is not elusive or ethereal. It's my audience that's my source of raw material you 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 this show is all about you what you hope what you dream how you fit in the human scheme and if anyone asks what kind of show i do this lovely intimate show is all about you Oh, I didn't know what I'd talk to them about tonight either. I was in a state of confusion. And then I looked through a little hole in the curtain. I saw their faces, and my theme became apparent. You, you, you. This show is all about you. What you do in your bedroom, how you do it, and with whom. But this lovely family show is never blue. This most acceptable show is all about you. Have you heard of Michelangelo? Yeah, he hosted the Logies this year, didn't he? The Lo he might have hosted the Logies. I'm not sure about that, but I do know that he was also an interior decorator in ancient Rome. <laughs> and one day the Pope said to Michelangelo, I've got a spooky and rather boring little chapel called the Sistine Chapel with nothing on the walls except wet stucco. So, he said, hop up that ladder, Michelangelo, with your paintbrushes and transform it into the wonders of Rome. And he did, which is really my roundabout way of saying, Possums, that tonight you are my wet stucco. <laughs> and on you I intend to create my masterpiece. You, you, you. This show is all about you. What you doubt, what you believe, what you're hiding up your sleeve, what you've concealed of your tax of all revenue. This deeply probing show is all about you. This could be a lovely chance for you ladies to make your debut. Does all of this fill you with a spooky sense of deja vu? Part possums while we're hugging and we're kissing. Think of the folk who don't know what they're missing. The simply stupid or the just plain dumb. The morons who've decided not to come. I refer to them, them, them. Oh, yes, let's talk about them. Sitting at home, the poor old souls, squeezing their greasy remote controls. Not my place to criticize or condemn. But since they're not here, we can say what we like about them. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the gorgeous Edna Rex. It's elfish. It's radical. 
emotional old megastar I have tonight. <laughs> Let me look at you. <laughs> oh, you've aged, darling, you've aged. <laughs> and yet I stay the same. It's not fair, is it? It isn't, oh, darlings, but at least I'm here amongst my own people, back to my roots, back in beautiful Melbourne with my own tribe, my homies, as my, my new little friend Snoop Doggy Dog would say, I'm hanging with my boo, aren't I? Yeah, I am, and I'm, or as J-Lo says, I'm still Edna from the block, and I am. The Americans sucked me dry. They sucked me dry, those Americans. They did, darlings. They, they gave me nothing except money and awards. They saw me... They saw me as a star, but you see me as a neighbour, don't you, possums? Admittedly a neighbour with a much nicer house than yours. <laughs> but still someone you could borrow a lovely cup of sugar from or a little teaspoon of cream of tartar. <laughs> oh, but you don't hear about that now. Young people wouldn't know what you meant by cream of tartar. Have you heard of cream of tartar? Oh, you have. Not quite as young as I thought you were, but I mean... <laughs> people don't bake anymore and all the lovely things of the past seem to be drifting away. Whatever happened to carbon paper? Carbon paper? Or bank managers? Where have they gone? <laughs> or Rubik cubes? Or fondue sets? Where are they? All those fondue sets... They can't all be in the same opportunity shop in Mailing Road, <laughs> can they? Well, it can't be. Or Mission Brown. What became of... Remember Mission Brown? <laughs> Where is all that Mission Brown now? Oh, the telegrams. Oh, I miss them. And Seersucker. In particular, I miss Seersucker. <laughs> you know... I belong to the Seersucker generation. I love that puckered and wrinkly old fabric. And yet I thought it had died out until recently when I went to Queensland. <laughs> Seersucker is alive and well in Queensland. And there are so many old people in Queensland in that heat. Why, why do they do it, darlings? I mean, if you want to preserve something, you put it in the fridge, not the oven. <laughs> Wouldn't you have... <laughs> you would have thought... Wouldn't you, darlings? Oh, dear, I was at a place called Bundaberg. The curtain went up. I looked out on a sea of sucker. I did! <laughs> and the audience was so old. The audience was so old and puckered and wrinkled. It was hard to tell where the sea sucker ended and the audience <laughs> began, quite frankly. Oh, darlings, but there's a mood here tonight. Do you feel it? There's a beautiful, beautiful mood. There's the feeling that we're all in the right place at the right time and in the right company too. Isn't that lovely? It is. And I'm looking down and these, it's like being in a lovely jumbo jet going somewhere beautiful, isn't it? This, this is first class here. <laughs> well, you look, as, you look as though you've been upgraded, I'm afraid, but still. <laughs> I mean, in a way, it's like first class on Qantas, isn't it? Where the where the crew sits. And up there, on that little mantelpiece, a definite touch of virgin blue there, there is. And all the way up there, the other ceiling on the right up there, where we have a slightly poorer type of person. Standby, little, my little standby possums. But it's, they're nearly stuck to the ceiling. They're like little, they're like little fruit bats up there, aren't they? Don't dribble on us, don't dribble on us. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> Listen to their wistful little squeaky cry. <laughs> Poor little darling, don't you worry. As the show wears on and on and on tonight, I'm going to glance up there from time to time. <laughs> I will, I will in strict proportion to the amount that you have paid. <laughs> goodbye, goodbye. Aren't I a tease? 
I'm a wicked, wicked tease, aren't I? <laughs> I shouldn't tease you, but I, I just said, well, oh, hello. Having a little sip of water, are you, darling? <laughs> are you? Oh, how lovely. It's such a new thing, isn't it, that glug, 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 glug <laughs> in the theatre? Isn't it? I mean, it wasn't long ago. It was boxes of chocolates, wasn't it? It was black magic and old gold and Ernest Hillier's and James's moving and rustling around the audience. Now it's... Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it's a trend. It's a, fa it's a fashion. You, you're worried you won't be moist enough tonight, darling? <laughs> Are you... You're frightened of... You think you might shrivel up? Put it away. <laughs> you see, I'm having mood swings. I have my patches peeling off, as a matter of... <laughs> no, it's people will look back on this period in history and they'll say, remember water, they'll say. <laughs> Extremely irritating. However... <laughs> oh, darlings, but you know it was nice in America. President Bush said my talent was nuclear. I wish he could pronounce that word. I wish he could. He got quite friendly. He said, I'll show you mine if you show me yours. He meant his passport. He's so proud to have one. And he's... <laughs> he's got three stamps in it, too. He showed me. <laughs> I didn't have the heart to show him my passport, which is a typical Australian one. Chock a block it was. <laughs> Oh, darlings, goodness, we speak the same language. You follow my subtext. You do. You won't shrivel. You won't shrivel. <laughs> oh, dear. But, you know, I look down here and I see people with expressions of terror on their faces. Don't. <laughs> Please, darlings, how many of you said, before you came to the theatre tonight, how many of you said to your husband or your wife or family member, or your children, or your, uh, your children, or your significant other, or same sex partner. <laughs> oh, these old eyes don't miss much, they don't. How many, how many of you said, I hope Edna won't pick on me tonight? I don't pick on people. I empower them. I do. You know, do you think those disciples by the Lake of Galilee said to each other, I hope Jesus doesn't pick on us today? <laughs> of course not. They wanted to be picked on. They were flaunting themselves. They were flapping their fishnets at him. They were. <laughs> they were. And he gave them a wonderful opportunity, didn't he, to write four bestsellers. He did, <laughs> because... Those Gospels, they were the Harry Potter books of their day. They were. And I'm, I mean that in a very reverent and a lovely way. I do. And I'm not comparing myself with Jesus. Well, in a way I am, because you will see miracles tonight. You will. I'm a miracle. I am a miracle. I was a dad. Look at me, a glamorous megastar. Not long ago, I was a frumpy old Mooney Ponds housewife, dowdy old... A little bit like you, as a matter of fact, darling. But, no, I meant that in an empowering, lovely way. But I, I was. I've given hope to women. It's wonderful. And I'm looking down. I see women here looking up at me, too, drinking in my words. Their faces are like flowers. The occasional cactus, but on the whole... Faces like flowers. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lovely, a lovely woman now that I'm focusing in on. <laughs> you! <laughs> you, darling, next to the dehydrated girl. <laughs> what's, what's your name? Sonia. Sonia, hello. S O N I A? S O N D R A. Oh, Sandra. Is Sandra. Oh. It's not a name you hear much now, is it, Sandra? In fact, I've never heard it before in my life. But I mean, is. You'd hear it, wouldn't you, Sandra? 
You would. You'll hear it a bit tonight, funnily enough. <laughs> you lovely Sonder. Did you see me peeping at you? <laughs> you lovely. And I'm peeping at you. What do you do for a living, Sondra? Play golf. You play golf? <laughs> <laughs> oh, darling. But what did you do before you took up golf? <laughs> just brought up the family. You brought up... Don't say just... I don't want to hear about your low self-esteem, Sandra. <laughs> you did more than bring up the family. You did lovely things. Bringing up a family is an honourable thing to do, Sandra. Where do you live, darling? <laughs> North, North Watsonia. North Watsonia. <laughs> sure you're in the right seat, Sandra? <laughs> no, no, please, don't. Please. Well, Sandra, I'm sure... I'm, I'm sure it's come on wonderfully, North Watsonia. I'm trying to remember what volume of Melways it's in. <laughs> Is that on, Sandra? <laughs> what line is it on? Hmm? The Glen Iris line. <laughs> it's not on the Glen Iris line. Sonia, don't waste our time, Sandra. <laughs> I'm getting snappy again. <laughs> have we met before, Sandra? <laughs> yes, we have. We have, have we, darling? <laughs> Lovely. Where did we meet, Sandra? <laughs> No, we never met, but I've seen we you. We haven't met. <laughs> seen you. You're in a state of total confusion <laughs> down there. We have <laughs> met. Your name is Sandra, and you live in North Watsonia. What's happened to your short-term memory, woman? <laughs> we get a lot of people from institutions in my shows, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm glad of that. There are people here... <coughs> doctors recommend me. There are, there are people here that haven't got tickets. They've got prescriptions. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> oh, Sandra. Is that a, a Suzanne's outfit you're wearing? <laughs> is it? You know, it's Suzanne's motto is, this goes with that. <laughs> but not in every case, Sandra. Not in every case. <laughs> you're a clever woman, Sandra, though, because you can merge with your background and be almost invisible. You're lucky. <laughs> You're lucky to be unobtrusive. You're like a little chameleon. Do you know what that is? Yes. It's a reptile, and it's a, it's it's a spooky old reptile, isn't it? Oh no! It is because it just changes whatever the background is. Whereas I can't go anywhere with anonymity. It's dreadful. I might on Sunday go down to the little Camberwell market. Everyone will notice me, pester me. I saw autographs without any paper, without any pen. Take pictures, not know which button to press. It's dreadful. I have a headscarf the Queen gave me which gives me total anonymity. It's a horrible headscarf, but she's, she's never been known to give away anything good. And it's... I wear that. No one knows who I am, Sandra. <laughs> Dear woman, sitting down there gazing up at me with that funny body language of yours. Did you go to the hairdresser this morning, Sandra? <laughs> I didn't think so for a minute, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's only a show, isn't it, Sandra? And you're lovely, and there's another woman, another woman, with her hands in an attitude of prayer. You! You! What's your name, darling? What? Hello, Robin, R-O-B-Y-N. Oh, R-O-B-I-N. That's, that's my second favourite spelling of Robin. <laughs> What do you do for a living, Robin? What did you do, Robin? You worked on a farm, did you? What kind of farming did you do? Think back, Robin. <laughs> hmm? What? Sheep and cattle, was it? Where, Robin? Whittlesey. Oh, lovely, that it? Whittlesey. Beautiful, Robin. Where are you living now? Kew. Lovely. 
adore Q. You've heard of Q, haven't you? <laughs> What sort of a home do you have there, darling? Oh, an Edwardian home. Oh, how beautiful is yours, Edwardian, is it, in North Watsonia? What sort of home, Sandra, do you have there? Which one? Just a comfortable home. Just a comfortable home, that's lovely. Is it, did it have any particular architectural style? Is it detached? <laughs> it's detached. You don't seem to be too certain, darling. Let me share with you my perception of a detached home. You go out the front door, Sandra. Are you with me so far? You turn sharp right. You walk a few paces. Then you turn sharp right again. And if you slam into a wall... <laughs> it isn't detached, is it? It isn't. Mind you... Mind you, Sandra, you look as though you've slammed into a thing or two in your time. You do. But I mean that. I mean that in a lovely, caring way. I do, because I'm adoring and bonding with little Sandra, as I am with little Robin, too. You little farm girl there, Robin. And you're in queue. Do you miss the livestock, do you, in queue? What type of a home do you have there? Edwardian. Oh, an Edwardian home? How beautiful. And is it a one-family home? Do you know the family, do you, Robin? That's a help. <laughs> That's a help to know them, isn't it, darling? Have you made it beautiful? I think you have, you lovely, merry little mite. You've got a lovely bone structure. Anyone commented on it before? Has a show ever noticed you before, Robin? Has a show ever noticed you? This is a bit historic, isn't it, Robin? Well, it's noticing you now. I love your bone structure. A nose in the middle, an eye on each side. Doesn't suit everybody, does it? And it's beautiful to see a few senior citizens here. Lovely old seniors and the courageous women who signed them out and brought them to the theatre. <laughs> it's a particularly, particularly lovely old senior there with a moustache. Little grey moustache. Hello, Sen. Hello. Hello. He's heavily sedated. He's not... <laughs> He's not really following this, but he, he's enjoying the colour and movement, and I think that's the main thing. It is. His eyes are shining. He's enjoying himself in his own funny little way. It's beautiful to see there. There's a few other old seniors here in various stages of unconsciousness. It's, it's a delight. And people, this little grey woman, hello. Who are you? Judith, hello, Judith. You bright little spark. What, what do you do, Jude? I'm retired. Retired from what? Nursing. Nursing? I felt the care. I felt caring. What kind of nursing did you do, Judy? Um, psychiatric. Psychiatric. <laughs> uh, most, most amusing, most amusing. Psychiatric nursing. Well, you might be put to work tonight. You might have to. I'd have to. Some of that old knowledge might come in handy tonight, Jude. But you've retired from the psychiatric nursing now. Lovely. And where are you living? East Malvern. East Malvern. Oh. <laughs> East Malvern Q. <laughs> Please, for heaven's sake. The East Malvern of the future, that's what it is. <laughs> it could be trendy like Yarraville and places like that, couldn't it? Little Sandra. <laughs> Woman I adore. However, it is lovely and... You know, uh, Judith, can you tell me why you remind me of me? 
Hair, touch there, isn't there? A little rinse you've had there. And you know, I used to try to make my own clothes, Judith. I did. And. <laughs> like you, I failed. But the thing is, no, it's only a show, isn't it? And it's lovely and it's warm. Is it warm? I think that's the main thing. You're a wise woman to dress for warmth rather than appearance. You are, Judith. <laughs> And you've got a lovely old senior with you, too. He's lovely, isn't he? He's beautiful. A bit of a handful. <laughs> and your home is what sort of a home? A Californian bungalow. A Californian bungalow. <laughs> in East Malvern. Isn't it funny to think in California there are probably some East Malvern bungalows? <laughs> They're probably part of a cultural exchange. <laughs> That's not a contradiction in terms, Judith. However... I'm making lots of new friends here tonight and bonding, and I'm also a therapist. And you probably have to do a little bit of that in your old job, isn't you? A little bit of caring and sharing and counselling. And I'm a counsellor, and I'm looking at little couples here. Are you a married couple? No. <laughs> Thinking of it, are you? <laughs> Thinking about it. And you two? No. No? Are there any little married couples here? Mm, you? Hello. How long have you been married? How long have you been married? Seven years. Seven years, that's lovely. Come up here. <laughs> come up here. Yes, both of you. Come on, darlings, both of you. Up you come. There we are. This is lovely. A big hand for this little couple. Yes, don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. This is going to be the highlight of your marriage. Isn't it beautiful? Hello, darlings. Let me hold you. Let me hold you. What is your name? Sam. Hello, Sam, Samantha. That's right. You're adorable in yours. Yeah. Hello, Ian. He's dead. Hmm? He's dead. He's dead. Why is he dead? He put his hand up. <laughs> well, you are a married couple. <laughs> now, <laughs> come over here. You're, look, oh, darling, I'm <laughs> cherishing you. I'm going to help you both. There we are, Sam. Ian, sit there, Ian. Ian and Sam, you're adorable. Now hold my hands, Ian and Sam. Now, hold my hands and take a deep yoga breath. Breathe deep into your lower chakra, Sam. Both of you say after me, please, Dame Edna. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Say it, please. Please, Damien. No. Help us. Please help. Help us with our crumbling marriage. Say that. <laughs> no, no. Say it. Help us with our crumbling marriage. I'll do all I can. I've got some little questions. Now, <laughs> no. <laughs> this, <laughs> this, this isn't the Jerry Springer show. Remember that. <laughs> You're lovely. Now, I'm going to do all I can for you, Sam. I am. You've been married seven years? That's beautiful. <laughs> Be <laughs> Please, this is serious. Your marriage is at stake here. That's good. No, no. no yeah. Sam. What, where are you living? <laughs> Tell me, please. Where? Hawthorne. 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 Yes, would you agree with that, would you? We were looking at where our house was on the video at the start of the night. Oh, you almost were, were you almost on the video, were you? I love it, Ian. Well, <laughs> there's going to be some revelations here tonight, possums. <coughs> Remember what you see here tonight, what you hear here, please let it stay here. <laughs> this, is, this is a three-step program. You come, you laugh, you leave, all right? <laughs> what do you do for a living, Marketing. Ian? Marketing? What do you market? What would you like to no, I'd like to know what you market. <laughs> All sorts of things? Yeah, Lovely. pretty much. Working out for you? Yeah. Lovely to be in Hawthorne, too. <laughs> and uh, how did you meet? Where did you meet? <laughs> I think it was in a pub. In a pub. Can you think for sure, aren't you? I'm pretty sure. What was the name of the pub? I think it was the Glen Ferry Hotel. The Glen Ferry Hotel. And you went... The Hawthorne. Oh, you see, they're arguing already. <laughs> and, 
And did you see her instantly? Yes. You did. Did you feel that, that little vibe? I did. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> and how long after that meeting in the Glen Ferry Hotel did you tie the knot? About, about six or seven years. Oh, six or seven six or years. Seven. <laughs> well, six or seven years. Did you keep going back to that hotel hoping to see each other? <laughs> but you met and you, you knew who... He was, and she knew who you were. And did you go out together a few times? Oh, yes. oh, lovely. How romantic, Sammy. <laughs> lovely. Has he got any irritating habits now, you find? <laughs> no. None? That pause, that little silence meant something. One, you've got to, this therapy won't work if you're in constant denial. <laughs> any irritating habits? Not happy with the snoring. You don't, you're not happy with snoring. Now, does she complain about the snoring? No, this pinches. Pinches you. That won't work. You'll start again. I've got a suggestion to make. Something I did with my husband, late husband. Um, you get a bra, a large size bra. Sandra could give you one of hers. <laughs> and and <laughs> you put it on and you put, stuff it with socks. Put it on him. Some of the socks or tennis balls that the dog has finished with. And then you swivel it around to his back, and he can't lie on his back in bed, so he won't snore. <laughs> it's only awkward in the morning when he's paying the milkman. Make sure he, he doesn't turn his back on a tradesman. <laughs> it works. It works. What about her? Does little Sammy have any <clears throat> slightly irritating characteristics? Besides the fact she's right all the time. She's what? She's right all the time. Ah, right all the time. It can be irritating, Sam. <laughs> pretend to be wrong sometimes. I did. Right all the time. Any other little quirks? No, that's really bad. That's it. Yeah. Parents still alive, are they, Ian? Yes. Yours too? How lovely. Is there a dominant parent-in-law? <laughs> Is there? Pass. Now, just tell me. Yes. Who's? His. His mother? <laughs> His mother. What's her name? Mrs. Mrs. Ian. Mrs. Ian. Yeah. Now, what's her real name? Lynn. Lynn. Do you get on well with her? Yes. Does she come and stay sometimes? No. <laughs> Lynn. Where does Lynn live? Far, far away. Where? <laughs> Mount Martha. Mount Martha. <laughs> Mount Martha. Oh, lovely. And does she come to town sometimes? Oh, absolutely. She visits you? Yes. And uh, is there any tension there when she comes? No. No. So what is the problem exactly? <laughs> this is being videotaped. No, no, it's not being videotaped. This is, this is confidential. Look, I'm sorry. What kind of a therapist would I be? of a therapist would I be? No, just, just tell me secretly. Um, she doesn't come to see us enough, actually. Not enough? No. Oh, she's a little bit of a stranger. She is. Down there in Mount Mother, a reclusive woman, is she? I need to speak to her. Bring on the phone, please. <laughs> I'm here to have a little word with Lynn. I am. Isn't this exciting? Um, there we well, are. They're actually in a state. They're in a state. state. Where yeah. are they now? Uh, Queensland somewhere. Somewhere? Yes. Mobile? Oh, I can get a number for you. Oh, yes, of course. The miracle of the mobile phone. What risks I take, don't I, in this show? Just going out on a limb like... <laughs> Won't she be thrilled to hear from me that... Here, there. There we are. She'll be very, very excited. Two seconds, it'll just... It'll just come up I there. I turned it off as I was coming. Oh, you turned the phone off when you were coming here. Little did you know how handy it would be <laughs> to locate Lynn. Is she a big woman, Lynn? No, she's very slender. Slender and pretty well invisible as far as your marriage <laughs> is concerned. <laughs> we're going to have a little word with her now. She's up in Queensland. You see, again, distancing herself from you and your husband. What's her husband like? He's lovely. He's lovely. <laughs> What's his name? John. John, huh? Is that it? Oh, lovely. And where are they in Queensland? 
No idea. No, we'll soon find out, won't we, possums? Here we are. Does she know you've come to see us tonight? Does she know you're here? No. No, of course not. Couldn't care less, could she, Sam? Is it a private number? Uh, yes, my oh, four. Oh. Oh. <laughs> private number. <laughs> She's probably at a ginger factory or something up there. Wandering through a cane field, perhaps, patting a toad. Come on, then. There it is in the bottom of her handbag. Buried, really, isn't it? John Dunn. Hello, Lynn. Uh, yeah? Lynn, this is a surprise call from Melbourne. Yes. Lynn, my name is Dame Edna. Oh, is that uh -huh. you, John? Yes. John, could I speak to Lynn, please? I'll, I'll get her for you, Dame Edna. Hello? What was he doing in the bottom of her handbag? Hello? Hello, Lynn. Yes? Lynn, my name is Dame Edna. I'm a famous megastar. And wow. I'm calling you up in Queensland from Melbourne. Now, did uh. you... Did you know that Ian and little Sam went to a show tonight? No, I didn't. Well, <laughs> I am the show! <laughs> You've got to be kidding. Lynn, can you hear the audience? I can, but I don't believe you. It's, <laughs> it's true, isn't it? It is. It's definitely true, Mum. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. And here's, <laughs> and here's a strange little voice. Hi, Lynn. <laughs> That's Sam. That was Sam. Is it true? Yes. Lynn, <laughs> did you know that your son and your lovely daughter Nora are seeking help with their marriage? Did you know that? <laughs> no, I didn't. Did you? I don't believe you. <laughs> They're seeking my help. I'm counselling them. Well, We're having a bit of a group session here. <laughs> oh, darling, like darling. What's happened to the house in Mount Martha? Have you locked it up? Don't tell anyone. Is there anyone there? I'm not telling. No, no. <laughs> Did you close the little side window? Oh, no, I forgot. I bet you forgot to do that. But I... <laughs> Nervous little... Are you having a lovely time in Queensland, Lynn? I am. I'm oh. doing the washing, actually. Oh, you're doing the what? <laughs> you're washing? I'm washing. You're doing the washing? I am. Oh, are you? Your little personal things you're rubbing <laughs> through. <laughs> but... Yes, well, it's warm up there and lovely, is it? No. Oh, oh you're having disappointing weather. Well, the weather. girl in the tent last night. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Lynn. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I hope it hasn't ruined your holiday. <laughs> <laughs> no. I just can't believe this. What, darling? I can't believe oh, it. I know, isn't it strange to think the rest of your life is going to be an anti-climax, Lynn? <laughs> <laughs> but <I'm... laughs> Lynn, I'll tell you how this happened. But I won't believe it anyway. I was on the stage, Lynn. I am on the stage, of course. Sure. And I was on the stage. I was talking to my audience... <laughs> or my focus group, as I prefer to call them. And I said, is there anyone here tonight with a vindictive and interfering old mother-in-law? <laughs> and you know... Sam put it... He did it. <laughs> oh, little... Sam's hand went straight up. <laughs> it did. <laughs> I'm... I'm teasing you. If I'm teasing you, Lynn, aren't I, darling? <laughs> oh, I am, you dear woman. Lynn, can I Listen, ask I'm you... I'm so delighted that you've spoken to me. I've always admired you and I've always wanted to say hello to me. I'm just well, so Isn't this incredible? I'm going to have a photograph taken of myself talking to you on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Move in. <laughs> no, 
lovely! Look! Kelly and his, I'll never <laughs> We've got two polies now. <laughs> lovely, and you can have them photoshopped and blown up and turned into something beautiful. It's I'll send them out as Christmas cards. Oh, darling, I, I've got to know this couple so well. You haven't. <laughs> <laughs> and they've been thinking things over. Are they very embarrassed? They've, they've come to a bit of a decision, Linny. Oh, have they? <laughs> they want you to come and live with them, Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> they do. It was, now I know you're lying. <laughs> it was Sam's idea. <laughs> it was. She, miss, she misses you. She Don't misses she? you. She thinks of you as the recluse of Mount Martha. <laughs> None of my friends are listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a lot of friends, have you? <laughs> One or two I had yesterday. It's lovely. Well, they're not here, I don't think, darling. And this is a very, very confidential counselling session. <laughs> <laughs> How many Can I ask you a quick question, Lynn? I might not answer, though. No, oh, yes, you will. <laughs> what are you wearing, Lynn? <laughs> what? Nothing. What are you wearing at the moment? Nothing. No. <laughs> You're expecting visitors, are you, Lynn? <laughs> no, neither phone calls either. What part of Queensland are you in? Brisbane now. Oh, you're in in Brisbane. Well, you're going to go further north, aren't you, darling? No, we, we've been been there. Oh, you've been up there and you're on your yes. way back to Mount Martha? Along with everyone else in the caravan. Well, try, oh, you're Victoria in the caravan. up here. Good heavens, well, try to remember when you're back in Melbourne to pop in on your son and daughter-in-law, won't you, when you're here? And I've <laughs> loved my... having a little chat with you. And before I go, Lynn, my entire audience is going to say, good night, Lynn. Are you ready for this? Right. Here <laughs> they come. <laughs> good night, Lynn. Good night, darling. Lots good of love. Night. Bye. Thank you so much. No, Mum, I love you both. <laughs> good night. Sorry, Lynn. <laughs> Goodbye, darling. <laughs> Lynn! A little bow to the audience. Come on, come on, bow to the audience. Oh, lovely, Sammy. And uh, look, Sammy, some lovely Cadbury's Roses shockies for you. And a lovely bottle of Banrock Chardonnay for you, Ian. Let's hear it for this beautiful couple. Oh. I wish I could help my own family like I helped and healed that family. <laughs> Alas, I can't. I have a, a problem daughter, my beautiful, beautiful daughter, Sandra. Her name is, her name is Valme. And she was a lovely child, but she became dysfunctional, Valme. She, she formed a relationship, a spooky one, with this very peculiar, retired Czechoslovakian tennis player. A woman called, um... <laughs> a woman called, uh, what was her name? Fern Bratislava, that was her name. And they set up home... Oh, I suppose I can tell you anything. They set up home together in Caroline Springs. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> Caroline Springs, it was recommended by another tennis player, John Newcomb, to them. And, of course, it's right under the flight path. I mean, the jumbos come down so low, you're sitting in their lounge room, you feel like ordering drinks. You do. You, you can practically see the in-flight moving. But that relationship has broken up. Um, just as I was getting to like Fern, or quite like her, or not actively dislike her, and, uh, now my daughter has relapsed into her old habits of kleptomania. She, she modelled herself on Winona Ryder. She... She goes into shops bare-legged and comes out with 15 pairs of razzmatazz on her legs. <laughs> As a child, she had the gift of the grab. She was always... <laughs> the gift of a grab. She was always looking for the five-finger discount, my daughter. But why does she always have to be found out, busted, to use a rather horrible expression, in Target? Can't she at least... Can't she steal from 
Myers or David Jones or somewhere. Bringing shame upon the family. Well, she's been picked up, I don't know how many times in Target, by the same rather heavily built, conscientious security officer, a, a woman called... <laughs> called Frankie Clitheroe. <laughs> to cut a long story short, they're now living together in Dalesford. What do you think of that? <laughs> well, the outskirts of Dalesford. This woman, Frank, I mean, they're in a rammed earth home. That's the fashion, a rammed earth home with a, with a kind of straw bale extension. It's very trendy, apparently. And this woman, Frankie, she's not just a security officer at Target, she's also a gourmet cook. She makes some, um, well, they sell things. They've got a, she's got a company called Clitheroe Cottage Consumables. And they go to Footscray Market, they buy hares. You know those big rabbits? And they mince them up, they make quince and hair pate. <laughs> and they sell it at, they sell it at the Coburg Trash and Treasure. It's, they also make lavender jam, but everyone in Dalesford makes that. The thing is that I I called them up. I felt I had to. You see, well, Valme goes along with this. She helps make the, the pate because she's on parole. She's can't work. And I called up because I'm only in Melbourne for a short time. I thought I have to do something for my daughter, you know, the feelings. I, I rang up, I got this gruff sounding Frankie. And she's called me Ed. I said, I had not even told her to call me Ed now. I said, oh yes, Frankie. She said, oh Ed, Val will be thrilled to see you. She said, come on up to Dalesford. Wait till you get a, I'm a gourmet cook, she said. Wait till you get a little taste of my crusted loin of hair. With a, with a, with a tamarind tepinard and a wasabi Jew. Well, I said, I said, I want to see my daughter. Do I have to meet this wasabi Jew? That's what I said. I didn't, I didn't know there were any Jews in wasabi. I don't even know where wasabi is. But I got my driver, Carl, uh, who left the gym early to drive me in a limousine all the way up to Dalesford. And uh, I said, look, park the car about a block away from their hovel, their home, because <laughs> I don't want my daughter seeing an expensive vehicle. She'll only steal the hubcaps, the radio, <laughs> she'll strip it down, she'll scratch hands off Iraq on the side of the car. So I got out, I went across to this little rammed earth hut you can smell, you can smell the, the Clitheroe Cottage consumables. I mean, you'd love it if, if the smell of boiled rabbit offal doesn't worry you. I met this Frankie woman, a heavily, a, oh, enormous woman in a sort of check shirt and, and overalls, and she nearly broke my hand when she shook it. And she sat me down at a, a blood-stained laminex table with a with a mincer clamped to one end of it, <laughs> dripping with blood and fur. There was a blood-stained axe leaning against the wall, probably used for splitting hairs, I would have thought. <laughs> and I... I was... My dysfunctional daughter was sitting there grumpily, and this woman must have been cooking all day long. She handed around little party pies. You know how polite, how lovely I am. I said, oh, these are lovely. I said, these are delicious. <laughs> I said, what's in these lovely pies? <laughs> I was waiting for her to turn her back so I could spit it into my handbag. <laughs> she said, oh, she did. I'm glad you like them. She said, they're tripe and chicory tartlets. <laughs> But chicory tartlets. I suffer from acid reflux. I have. I suffer from very, very acute acid reflux. But I was keeping it under control. But the floodgates opened when I got the first whiff of Frankie's loin. Oh. 
from the room. I said I had an allergy. Is, aren't we lucky to have allergies now? I mean, in the old days, we just have to say, your food makes me sick. <laughs> However, I ran out of the other room, but the evening wasn't over. The evening wasn't over. We had to sit on beanbags and watch a DVD of Thelma and Louise after that. <laughs> and then a cupboard door opened. A tragic figure appeared. You know, they've adopted a child. These women have adopted a child. A little Cambodian waif. Oh, it tottered towards me on its spindly legs, wearing a little loin or loincloth. <laughs> They'd say a saron, but where is a saron? Had a little flower over its ear, a little flower. They. <laughs> You couldn't tell if it was a girl or a boy, and I don't think it knew. I don't think it knew. Its name was Tran. 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 Aptly named, I thought. And little Tran, poor little Tran, looked up at me with big brown eyes, as much as to say in broken Cambodian, get me out of the clutches of these deranged women. I was trying to think what Megastars Anonymous would advise me to do. Detach with love. I ran out into the night, but I couldn't find my car, Sandra. I couldn't find my driver. I had to stay the night in, a dist in the outskirts of Dalesford. Can you imagine what that's like? I don't think you can. But I think you can. <laughs> it was hell on earth. I had to sleep on a stained orange couch. A little tram curled in a fetal position beside me. Oh, it was dreadful. And I was woken up from no sleep whatever at about quarter to four in the morning by a noise. A sound coming from my daughter's bedroom. A sound I hope no mother here ever hears. <laughs> ever hears coming from the bedroom of their loved ones. It sounded as though they were sanding the floor. That was the sound. <laughs> I thought, what a time of night to do renovations. That's what I thought. <laughs> and then I suddenly remembered that this woman, Frankie, is not just a security officer, a target, not just a gourmet chef. <laughs> She's the Dalesford representative of Snap-on Tools. She is. They, they were. They must have been testing an optional attachment. An optional attachment. But then their whole relationship is an optional attachment. Oh, I thought you can love your children. You don't have to like them. I fled into the night. I did. And I think you shouldn't. My mother always said, I shouldn't criticise. And then she said, don't criticise anyone unless you've walked a mile in their shoes. And I wish I had walked a mile in her shoes, because then she would have been a mile behind me. And I would have had her shoes, which were hideous beyond belief. Those Doc Martens, he should be struck off, that Doc Martin. <laughs> but I'm having all these problems. What was your name again? <laughs> Judith. Judith, yes, I'm just checking your memory, Judith. I. I went back to my bridesmaid, Judith, Madge Allsop. Well, you know, she's, she's a leech. She's always lived off me. She's a parasite, a sponger. And she's back in New Zealand. And, of course, she's being recruited by the Scientologists. They want my money, those Scientologists. They do. And, of course, they like Madge because she resembles E.T. It's, <laughs> it's the science fiction connection. So... Of course, Madge wants to meet Tom Cruise and John Travolta. She wants to be the meat in the sandwich. But I, I had a phone call from her this morning. She said, how's the movie going? Well, I'm, we're doing a reality film about me and my, my, my life, Judith. Isn't that lovely? And my family, too. It's like the Osbournes, only much more tasteful. And uh, Madge, uh, deliberately, I mean, has been kept in the dark. So how... 
Have you told her we're doing this film, Andrew? Uh, it may have slipped out last week. It might have slipped out under what situation? I mean, were you talking to her? No, we're in a bar. Actually. In a bar? Yeah. We go out occasionally. Madge Allsop should not know these things. She's not going to be playing herself in this film. Judith, Judy Davis wants to that role. She's desperate for it. Oh, she'd be good too. Nicole Kidman wants to be me. Mm -hmm. Russell Crowe wants to be my late husband. But I don't want any of them. I don't. I want real people in this film. I want it to have the texture of reality. But of course, we're shooting in a couple of days. I'll have to cast immediately. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? And I can see some people I'd love to screen test. Come on, darling. Up you come. Come on. Yes, yes. No, you. No, not you. No, no. Robin, Robin. Come on, Robin, darling. Yes, a big hand for Robin. Sandra. Come on, Sandra. This way. And Judith and the senior. Both of you. Come on, Judith and the senior citizen. Isn't this exciting? And the senior in the blue shirt. The confused one. Come on, darling. Up you come. This is going to be... You're going to meet stars of the future now. Isn't it gorgeous? Here we are. Up you come, Sandra. Look at you, you darling. <laughs> Hello. Hello, you sweetheart. Oh, lovely. Hello there, Robin. You chic little <laughs> cue dweller. And Judith, too. Hello. And, oh... <laughs> And hello, <laughs> Judith, sweetheart, and my old senior. Hello, senior. He's having a hormonal resurgence, I think. <laughs> and look at this, into the twilight zone with you. Hello, senior. Oh, lovely. There you go. <laughs> He's in a world of his own, that one. <laughs> now, possums, Warren, are you ready? Warren, you're going to... We're doing a screen test. Little screen test, lovely action, whatever they say. Now, we're going to workshop a little scene from my life. The dialogue is exactly as it happened in the 50s. Bring on my 50s kitchen, please. This is my kitchen in Moody Farms in the 50s. There we are. Little touch of Doris Day. We're back in Doris Day land now, possums. Now, the laminex table is coming on, and I'm going to reenact a scene that happened in way back then when I told my family, my mother, my husband and my bridesmaid Madge that I wanted to be an actress. Bring on please my mother Gladys. Here she is. <laughs> oh, that's gorgeous, Judith. Look, there we are. Very authentic looking. She's got her script there. That's behind the laminex. And now my late husband Norm. Would you bring on Norm? Here we are. Goodness. <laughs> Lovely, Norm. You sit there. I should point out that he's had his first urological incident. <laughs> and now my bridesmaid, Madge Allsop. Come on, Madge. Oh, far too pretty to be Madge, but still very <laughs> nice, Robin. Lovely, darling. You just stand here, sweetheart. Uh, I don't expect perfect performances, but I think we're going to find a star. I think we really are. Now, you're my mother, Judith, my mother, Gladys. You are my husband, Norm, senior. And <laughs> you, Robin, are my boring old bridesmaid, Madge, from New Zealand. But you're going to bring a new life to that performance. Andrew is our sound man. Warren is our visual man. And this, I'm not in this scene. I am personally not in this scene. This is a build-up to my entrance. But you're concerned, you're worried. You're worried about me, and I want to hear the worry in your voice. You must speak slowly and clearly. Now, it's yours, Gladys. Norm, I'm worried about your wife, Edna. She's your daughter too, Mother Beasley. And she's my wee friend. Don't overact, Robin. <laughs> Cut that. Now... You have to just say it. You, you can embellish it a little bit later, Robin. She's my wee friend. Say it again. And she's my wee friend. That's very good. You see, we are a New Zealander, so everything's we. Now, uh, Norm. That Barry Humphreys has been turning Edna's head. He thinks my wife is megastar material. 
That long-haired pansy. Uh, that, that. What? <laughs> you say, that long-haired pansy. What's he doing with my daughter? How could she be a megastar? She's a Mooney Ponds housewife. Shh, she's coming. Doris Day moment then. <laughs> well, what have you all gone so quiet for? Haven't you gone to New Zealand yet, Madge? How did you know I was going to New Zealand? No, you say, I've written it phonetically in the New Zealand dialect. You say, <laughs> how did you know I was going to New Zealand? Zealand. 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 Very good. <laughs> Well, I wrote the script, you silly old Kiwi. <laughs> Edna, is there something you want to tell us? Yes, if you must know, there is something I want to tell you, Mother Dearest. There's someone who thinks I'm beautiful and talented. I, th I think you're beautiful, Edna. No, <laughs> nearly. <laughs> no, don't give up, don't give up. <laughs> I think you're beautiful. Edna, Edna. Oh, Edna. <laughs> yes, I haven't gone with that. No, that's perfectly all right, <laughs> I think you're beautiful, Edna. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Button your lip, Madge. I won't be silent. What about us? What about our, your wee nippers? Phil May and Kinney. How will I ever cope when you become a wee star of stage, screen, and television? No. <laughs> no. Television. 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 Very good, Mad. Very good. <laughs> do what you have to do, Ed. I'll look after the children. I've held you back long enough with my old waterworks problem. <laughs> my prostate has been hanging over your head for years. <laughs> I knew you'd understand. But how will we tell Kenny and Valme? Here they are now. <laughs> Hi, Mum. Hi, Dad. Nice Hi, enough. Grandma. Nice enough. Yes. Yep. Mum, there's something I have to tell you. <laughs> what could it be? <laughs> uh, you start again, Kenny. You've got a, it's a greeting. Hi, Mum. Hi, Dad. Make it nice. Hi, Mum. Hi, Dad. Hi, Grandma. <laughs> Mum, there's something I have to tell you. Mum, let me yeah, No, no, yes, 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 she's got a line. I haven't got anything to say to, you, to anybody. You can all get stuffed. <laughs> that's my daughter. That's my daughter. <clears throat> Mum, let me speak. Please. This desperation. No, no, Won't no. somebody let me speak? I'm not as other men. Please turn over. It's a stage direction. You don't have to say, please turn over. I love the accent. I didn't realise my son had been abroad for so long. Where are you from? Berlin. Berlin? What happened? Cabaret is my son's favourite musical. Don't have to say please turn up. Just say I am not as other men. You can I say it in it. German if you like. 
Say it. <coughs> Say it. I'm not as other men. All right, no problem. I'm not <laughs> as other men. Neither is your father, Kenny. But <laughs> listen, all of you, I'm going to become a professional actress. Ah, oh, pigs might fly. <laughs> oh, that will be the limousine to take me to the airport and on to international stardom. You can't leave us in the lurch. Ed, wherever life takes you, will you promise me one thing? Anything, Norm. Promise never to write a script or short play in which we forfeit our dignity and appear ridiculous. <laughs> Mum, I've got an idea. This could be... <laughs> this could... <laughs> You've got an idea, have you, Kenny? Yes. <laughs> what, is, what is the idea? This could be a George's musical. Trust you to think of a musical, Kenny. Uh, someday my prince will come. <laughs> Is that what you'd sing if it was a gorgeous musical? You've jumped your line, Kenny. Oh. <laughs> you Schweinhund. <laughs> now, listen. critics going to say <laughs> it could be a beautiful musical and if you, if this were a musical what would you sing uh someday my prince would come <laughs> and you valme anything by kd lang <laughs> madge you've gone rather quiet why are you looking so worried madge i'm worried that you will expose to the don't world. put on a silly voice let's hear you say it <laughs> My bizarre... Say it start at the top. Oh. I'm worried that you will expose to the world my bizarre sexual appetite. <laughs> boom, boom. Your secret is safe with me, Madge. <laughs> For now... Kenny. Yes. Yeah. Now you're there, darling. There we are. Now look, I can't judge for this movie. I can't do the final casting. Let the audience's applause be the judge. What did you think of Sandra's performance as my dysfunctional daughter? Beautiful. Or Judith. Judith is my mother. Beautiful. Or the senior as my late husband. <laughs> and the sensitive portrayal <laughs> of my son, Kenny! <laughs> hey! My God! <laughs> Wunderschön! <laughs> all right, well, how about little Madge here? Did you think she was all right? Loved you, Mad. <laughs> they like you so much, you don't stand a chance of being in my film. <laughs> but let's get a picture all the same. Lovely. There you are, Maggie. And look at these gifts coming along. These, these gifts are mine. But <laughs> that's yours, Robin. Some nair for you, darling. <laughs> Could we hear it from Robin from Q? camera. Oh. <laughs> there you are. And now, Judith, my dear woman, there you are. Lovely. <laughs> oh, that'll be lovely of me, that one, oh, Judith. Oh, okay. And for you, some Tim Tams, darling. <laughs> <laughs> You're a star. Don't you think she's a star? There we are. And... <laughs> oh. You're adorable. 
You are actually the image of Valma. It's unbelievable. <laughs> uh, look, I've got a little Mac. <laughs> Lipstick for you, darling. Oh, on your That'll shock the girls in the club, won't it? <laughs> Don't you think she's lovely? There we are, Sandra. <laughs> Senior. Here we are. Oh, look, some depends. There we are. There. These are as worn by Isa Buttrose. There we are. There we are. Senior citizen. Lovely. And now, what's your name? Gerhardt. Gerhardt. Oh, Gerhardt. <laughs> oh, I'd like one for my own collection if I may. <laughs> There we are. <laughs> Edna Uber Alice. <laughs> now, <laughs> I've got a lovely present for you, Gerhard. Gerhard. A, si <laughs> a signed photo of Jamie Jury. There. Just, just. Ah. Oh, dunk a thousand miles. Old possums, call me old-fashioned, but I happen to have had a ball in this show tonight. Thank you, darlings. Thank you. Oh. And you know... Oh, dear. And it wouldn't be... It wouldn't be a lovely show of mine if there weren't a few gladdies at the end, would it? And look at these beautiful lads. Here's one for you, you dear little woman. Wish I'd had a good look at you earlier in the evening. There's one for you and you, possum. It's gladdy time, a famous moment in my lovely shows. There's a gladdy for you too, Ian. And for little Sammy there. You're feeling better now about it all. You said what you think about Lynn. It's cleansing, isn't it, really? It's gladdies. Just close your eyes, catch them with your teeth. There's nothing I like more than the whistle and smack of a gladdy. Sometimes followed by the thrilling tinkle of a... Oh, you broke that with your greedy, clutching hand. Here we are. There's a gladdy for you. Beautiful gladdy for you. You little friends of Kenny have crept in here tonight. I'm glad to say. Here we are. There's a lovely gladdy for you. One for you, you dear little mice. Don't you think, looking around, that my audience is particularly attractive? Looking people, I think so, anyway. There we are, it's gladdy time. There we are. There we are. What other show does this? Could you imagine Stevie Wonder doing this? You could. You could. There we are. No, all the prophets. All the prophets are ploughed back into the audience. Here we are, possums. One each. One each. There's one for us. One for you. Oh, little Gerhardt. There we are. Gerhardt. Yes. Wunderschön, Gerhardt. Mmm. <laughs> one for you. Oh. Enough, pass the other one back. I said back. Back, behind you, behind you. There we are, you greedy old gladdy grabber. Still they come, and still they come, these gladdies. Yes. Yes. There we are. Oh, I think we're covering ground pretty well here. Here we are over here. Yes. The whistle and smack of a gladdy. Sometimes the thrilling tinkle of a contact lens. Now, up with your gladdies. Up, up. Look, look. It's a garden in the theatre.
feel a spooky sense of power as you oscillate Australia's favourite flower. You'll get a floral high when the petals fly and you wave that flag. Trembling from bulb to tip and wave that glad. Wave that glad. We don't need gladdies in large amounts. It's the little bit on the end that counts. You see a big improvement. It's colour and movement when you wave that glad. Now, down glads, give them a rest. We're going to sing the chorus. I'm going to teach you how to do it when I sing. Wave that glad. You sing. Wave that glad. Wave that Let's hear you. Wave that glad. Lovely. And <laughs> Isn't this a sophisticated show? And then when I sing, you'll see a big improvement. You sing, it's colour and movement. So I'll do that again. You'll see a big improvement. It's colour and movement. Beautiful. And those without glads to clap in time to the music, nice and loudly. Now, at the end, I want you to stand and tremble, those gladdies. That will get you into the trembling position, the exiting position, and the standing ovation position. <laughs> now, we need a little practice. Down, glads, down, glads. You stand and tremble. <laughs> Very good indeed. You stand and tremble. <laughs> you, stand and tremble. Very good. You, Whiskers, stand and tremble. Excellent. You, stand and tremble, that gladdy. Ah. That was a tragic case of gladiolus interruptus, I'm afraid. <laughs> you, stand and tremble. You, and let it be drawn. No, let it be drawn. You, darling, let your gladdy be drawn to mine. You, you, no, you, you, him, him. Let it be attracted. Come on. 